My name is TJ Gamble and this is Bruzel. But what does it actually take to get one of these in the state of Alabama? It's all told we spent about 400 bucks, but this is what we got. That's a good whiskey. There's a lot going on there. All right, we are live this Monday. It's gonna be just me today. Hopefully that's not too big of a disappointment. Jill, it's got a little stuff going on. She might join us a little bit later. We'll see. I don't know, it's hit or miss, but she couldn't be here for the start of this stream. Hopefully y'all are having a good Monday. Maybe got a little football going in the background, but then the main attraction is about to start. We got a lot of folks in the chat. Man, this is an active chat early, which is great. That's good to hear. J-Rock's mad at me because we're not going to tater sticker one of these bottles. I know, I know. Next year, all barrel picks will be tater stickered, and I promise J-Rock will get on another pick, and the next one will have his face on it. Guaranteed. Y'all let me know what y'all are doing, uh, what you're sipping on, and hit the like button for me. Let's get this party started. We've got a lot to discuss. We've got a lot to go over. We've got some new barrel picks sitting over here. But we're gonna get to those here in just a minute because we also got some other fun stuff we need to try. Get our palettes all warmed up and then we'll get over to the barrel picks. I made myself a little bit of an old fashioned right here that I've been smoking while I was waiting to get this started. Ooh, fancy, fancy. And the reason I did that is because these will be for sale soon on the shop. So a lot of y'all have been asking for these Brusel you can't even see it because it's got a drink in it now, but it's got it's got a nice Bruzel logo on the front of it. Great, it doesn't even show once I've got stuff behind it. Well, so much for that sales pitch. That didn't go well. <laughs> the rum is out of this world good there, Dragon. Um, and I'll try to keep up with the chat. It looks like it's gonna be an active one today. So, but man, that's a delicious old fashioned. You've gotta see, it. it's really visible in person. The camera just doesn't pick it up. And it, I think what it is, is it's actually frosting over here a little bit because I've got a nice cold ice ball in there. Mmm, man, that's good, that's good. Not what I wanted to, I'm, I'm more of a neat sipper. Old fashions give me trouble because it's just sweet and then I can drink like 10 of them and then it's, then it's out, of, uh, out of hand. We've got a few things new. Um, yeah, we've got the rocks glass. So those just came in, those will be for sale probably later this week, should should be. We'll announce it, I'm sure, on the mailing list or in, in Patreon as well. Benchmark eggnog, haven't had that. What's my favorite old fashioned recipe? I like um, Demerara, so just use Demerara instead of a simple syrup. A uh, little, you know, a little orange peel, a uh, little um, bitters. I mean, it's pretty simple. I, we did a video on it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to open this. This is the only thing I bought in the last bourbon hunting video that we did. It took a lot of discipline, and this is a, but this is the most I've ever paid for a single beer. This is Barrel Carving Imperial Pumpkin Ale from 2022, and I have to figure out how to get it open now. I don't, I think my, my bottle opener may have got taken upstairs. I may have to see if I can find another one. Definitely got a knife here, we can make that work. Oh man, Fireball. Hey, whatever you're into, Crafty, go for it. Um, a bourbon, and, I don't know if we'll do a bourbon and a rye. We'll see what they show us. Um, I tend to, you know, if they tend to give us good things, I tend to buy them. And honestly, I would like a bourbon and a rye. We're trying to get to, so next year, our goal is to release three barrel picks every month. And it could be three from the same place, it could be two from one, one from another. But our goal is to get to where we can pay ahead of time right go ahead and pay for them so we don't have to rush them out so it's you're not surprised like you'll know ahead of time this is what we're going to have and you know you can plan for weeks in advance and so i'm assuming the still austin will be out next year um you know early next year for picking it this friday so that's where i'll be this that's that's what he's asked about this friday i'll be in austin texas to pick a barrel with still austin Beach sand bourbon with the 499 super chats and when you started youtube channel how long did it take to get traction. Um, yeah, so if you wanna talk about growing a YouTube channel, this is what you do. We started with shorts, cause shorts are just easier. Easier to learn, like what you need to do is get a lot of videos out and under your belt so that you can, you know, you can learn some things. Uh, learn what works, learn what doesn't work, learn, you know, cameras and microphones and audio and all sorts of different things. So do shorts. 
post 30 and 30 days, and it took us about three weeks of posting 30 and 30 days to actually see traction. So about that third week of, you know, consistent good videos every single day, uh, they just took off. But shorts can be batched, right? So you can. This is the $30 beer, which I, I know is gonna be a huge disappointment. There are no beers worth $30. Doesn't exist. Let's see, I got a beer glass over here. Let's give her a little try. But if you have any questions, just ping me off the stream. Happy to answer any of them you may have. Of course, this glass is not big enough. This is a massive beer. I'll at least give them that. It's like a half a freaking gallon. It is pumpkin beer, yes. It, it, was, it was wasteful, but I didn't buy any bottles. I thought I would take a chance here. Y'all wanna see, see this up close here? I'll give y'all the close-up view. Make sure I switch it back because I got a bad habit of just leaving it like that. I haven't had Jim Beam, Jim, Jim Beam. I, I haven't even drank yet. Jim Beam Repeal Batch, have not had it. Made it for a live, Green made it, appreciate it. Well, I'll be. That may be the first pumpkin alcohol thing I'm kinda on board with. Not for $30, hell no, not for $30. No, 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 no. But that's actually quite nice. That's a, that's a nice beer. That's pleasant. If that were $10 for a six pack, I'd be all over it. Wouldn't drink more than one at a time, but it is better than Miller High Life. Like that's, they did something nice here. So I, I can see why it's elevated, but not like 30 bucks is just, a, a lot of, I don't want, I don't know what it costs to make it, but it's almost two beers for $30. There you go, $15 a piece. I mean, that's in that Goose Island um, bourbon barrel aged stout range, right? So we tried it, pretty good. Favorite Texas bourbon? Probably still Austin. Texas bourbon's just super intense. Um, and so you gotta, you gotta be into it. Want to do a bourbon hunt at my liquor store on a random hunt, small liquor store. Where are you at? Where are you at, Beck? Where are you located? We're still planning our trips for next year. All right, we're going to warm up our palate before we get to these. I don't want to go into these cold, and I haven't really drank a lot since last week. Didn't drink much over the weekend, at least not much whiskey. Um, I was in Vegas all last week, so definitely drank a little bit there. But this is Barrel Foundation Bourbon aged five years that they were kind enough to send to us. Um, and I've been liking a lot of the stuff Barrel's been putting out here lately. Josh with the Five Proof membership. Appreciate it, Josh. David, new to the Bruzel gang, happy to have made a live. Welcome to the B team, David. Welcome, SEMA was fun. SEMA's always a good time. Logan's from Opelika as well. Ooh, that smells nice. Okay, Jonathan, we're going to talk about this pipe dream here in just a second. We are going to talk about it. So this is the cast strength pipe dream, and we, we might have something, a little interesting offer for y'all. So we're going to try this, we're going to try that, and then we're going to get through these barrel picks here. A Bowman trip. I'd love to do a Bowman trip. I don't, like, I don't know if they'll let us, right? That's a big, um, that's a pretty big distillery. And so those mainstream distillers, it's just hard for us to get involved with. Did the Super Chat show up on, Super Chat's not showing up on the screen? There it is, okay. Ooh, is it that far behind? It must not be working. Something must not be working. That was an old one. I may have to turn that off. Uh, which is better, Barrel or Four Roses? It depends. The Barrel Craft Spirits Private Label Blends, two of those I've got beat any Four Roses I have on my, on my bar. Uh, one of them I had did not, so it just, just varies, right? Florida in the house. Oh, that's nice. It, somebody in the chat, look up this Barrel Foundation. They sent it to us. I don't know what it costs. Look this up and tell me what this goes for. I haven't had the redemption weeded. I need it. Not really a cider fan there, JFK. Hancock Reserve. Uh, it's pretty good. It's low proof. It's, I mean, it's overhyped because it's Buffalo Trace, but it's good. Some of them are exceptional but it's like, what, 88.5 proof, 
Buffalo Trace product, which you know is gonna be good, but not $100 good. What is a proof of the barrel? This is 100 proof. $55, okay, 50, $55. Better than Miller High Life in Simmons? Somebody asked that, Omega, so they, they asked if it was better than Miller High Life, so I just, I just agreed. Need an all Redwood review? Uh, so we, and we may do some stuff. We reached out to Redwood to do a barrel pick for next year. And their barrel pick program of their own distillate doesn't, doesn't open up until late next year. So they've sent us a special offer for our patrons. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. So y'all will be able to, some of y'all will be able to get your hands on one of these cast strength pipe dreams here if you're interested. Rock Hill is one of the better things Buffalo Trace makes. Um, it's, you know, obviously outside of BTAC stuff, but Ben Holiday Rick House proof for the win for sure. I like this though. This is just good, simple, flavorful bourbon. It's got a nice oakiness to it. Like I would have probably pegged it a little older than five years. Um, nice mouthfeel to it. A hundred proof is perfect. If you like just kind of a nice, soft, easy sipping but oaky bourbon, this one's gonna be right up your alley. Paul, both my, both my wife and I say hi from Medawi, Medawi? Australians are gonna say Medawi, aren't they? In Australia, appreciate it, Paul. Thanks for hanging out. I need to see if that super chat comes up because my script may not be where I gotta have to write all sorts of custom scripts to do all sorts of weird things here. And it may not be, it's definitely delayed. Oh, I'm gonna change from top chat to all chat so I see everything and not just what it what it highlights. Titusville in the house. War Eagle to you two, man. Favorite sipping rye, the, the Michter's rye. I, like I love the barrel straight, but just good old Michter's rye. I'll tear that stuff up. Go by TJ as well. You did, you're in the B team, man. Oh, it looks like it worked. Paul's Paul's super chat came up over there. You think yours got missed? I, so JL, I didn't see a super chat. For, oh yeah, I did. Oh, I did. Sorry, I did miss it. I think it might have been when I was switching from live chat to. So any word when your 13th Colonies barrel pick is coming out? Barrel craft is $89. I don't love this at $89. 50 bucks. That's a pretty good bottle. Um, I don't know, but so we, we've got the short barrels, the short barrel, these barrels are dropping tomorrow for patrons. So we've got a video coming out in the morning of our experience going to do this barrel pick. And then, um, these are going to release two patrons starting at five o'clock central time. And then every 20 minutes, they're going to move to a different patron tier until they eventually go to the free tier and then discord and the mailing list and for, for anybody that wants to gain access to it. So they'll just be opened up to the public if there are any left at that point. Um, the 13th Colonies, I, I haven't heard that it's left their facility yet. So um, we've got those and the Ben Holidays that are in some stage of transit, right? They go to a distributor, the distributor holds them for a little while then gives them to the store. We don't know any day now is, is kind of what our thinking is. So we're hoping we can drop these this week and in two weeks we have another one, whether it's the 13th, whether it's the holiday, but like we just we just don't, like you just don't know. Once you buy them, you just don't know until they show up. That's the problem. Let's see, I'm, I'm missing a lot of the chat. Sorry about that. What do we got going on? Prideful Goat, yes. I, I don't have a rye. I do have their cash drink bourbon though and it is really good. Johnny with the $10 Super Chats with your first Super Chat. Appreciate it, Johnny. Uh, no message though. We need more Crittentons. Well, I, I had a conversation. I was over in uh, Mississippi at Spillway the other day and I had a conversation with Matt about doing more stuff. So I, I know we'll be doing more stuff and I may, I may try to get some stuff going. Like, what do y'all want to see from them? Because he's pretty much open to any crazy experiments we want to do. Uh, Sean, they will only ship to the U.S. and unfortunately, they'll only ship to a certain number of states. So it's like it's like 45 states. So it's a lot of them. But unfortunately, I know we've had some folks kind of agitated because our last barrel pick shipped out of New York. They had 45 states, and now they're shipping out of Texas. These next few ones, and it's a different list of states. I think two or three of them are the same, and then two of them are different.
J Rock, see, J Rock's mad at me because of the tater sticker. Thanks, Grizzly Pig, for just jabbing it a little bit. It was just too late. Like I was gone all last week. We just couldn't get them printed in time, and the, and the bottles had to go out. Like we we looked at having them printed, and they just were going to get here like a week from now, and it just wasn't going to work. We weren't going to have delays like we had on the last picks. We we can't can't deal with it. But we're going to be planning ahead. J Rock's going to come on another pick, guaranteed. How do people get the small BTAC samples? Buffalo Trace sends it to them. So they're on the media list. Uh, yeah, the Blue Bolt 248s. I haven't seen those yet. I have tried the Knob Creek 18, but not the Little Book Chapter 7. I have a Little Book Chapter 7. I have not tried it. How much better is Eagle Rare than regular Buffalo Trace? A lot better. A lot better. I Like, I'd, I'm, I don't know. I Like, regular Buffalo Trace is good. Good whiskey, but I really like, really like Eagle Rare. No J Rock stick. It does have the Bruzel logo on it. That's the only, the Rise, the only one that has a color Bruzel logo. The other ones are like black and white Bruzel logos. Ah, uh, what was the most expensive bourbon you have bought and was it worth it? Had to be the Pappy 15 behind me. And yeah, but not worth it from like a drinking perspective. Worth it to have it, to share it with people. Um, you know, to, to use it on the channel, it was worth it. And I didn't pay full secondary price for it, but definitely a markup. So I reached out to Redwood to try to do a barrel pick. And they, like I said, their barrel pick program is coming up next year. But what they did say is they had their limited release cask strength coming out of this pipe dream right here. And they are willing to allocate us 200 bottles now they're shipping it out of a retailer in California. They're only gonna to ship to like 25 or 30 states. So not everybody will be able to ship them. But if y'all are interested, Friday, we are going to open up on Patreon access to these. Now we don't make any money on this. We don't, like we're not taking a commission. We're not doing anything like that. We've got no commitment whatsoever. So if we sell 10, if we sell 200, doesn't matter to me. Like it, it really doesn't matter. I just thought it would be cool because this is kind of hard to come by, this Pipe Dream Cash Strength. And if you're interested in one, we're going to open it up. They're going to open it up, give us access. We'll post the code to all of Patreon, all at the same time. And whoever wants one can go grab one and have it shipped to them. Uh, I'm still waiting on the price. We'll have details before Friday, but I just, just got back from, I was out of town last week and some of that stuff's been, uh, been bouncing around. But I, I just thought it was cool to give y'all access, right? They're like, we can't do a barrel pick, but we can give folks access to some, to our limited release that's about to come out. And this is a week before it comes out anywhere else. So they're gonna drop it this Friday for us. And then next week, I think it'll be available for more people. And we're about to try it right here, Nick. We are about to try it. I don't think I've ever had the pipe dream. I've had the Grizzly Beast. I've had the um, Lost Monarch. I've never had the pipe dream. I'm always trying to challenge your adulting responsibilities, Richard, because this is Friday, but these drop tomorrow. Hmm. Oh, that's really good. Oof, man. That's interesting. Nice and soft and sweet and complex. Great mouthfeel to it. Not a ton of oakiness. A lot of fruit. A lot of apricot on the middle of the palate to me on that. Nice soft oakiness all the way through. I think that's a really nice bottle of whiskey right there. So we'll have pricing, we'll have everything. Like it should be MSRP. Like you're buying it straight from Redwood. They just have a retailer to actually ship it out. We're not marking it up. Like, like I said, literally, they just said they can make them available. We said that would be cool, that y'all would appreciate that. And so just be, you know, even if you're not a patron, just join the free patron. So go to you know, patron.com forward slash Bruzel. Sign up for the free patron tier and you should be able to score yourself one of those on Friday. Seth, have you reached out to Logsteel for a pick? Appreciate your first super chat there, Seth. I have not, should I? Is Logsteel one I should put on my list? If so, somebody ping me in the Discord to remind me of that after this stream. What's the proof? The proof on this is, Lord have mercy, they have a dark brown wrap a dark brown label and they're using black print on it. So how, like how is a normal person supposed to read this? 
I'm gonna take a pick. That's that's for I mean even like I know I normally can't see. It's 58.4% alcohol by volume. So what's that? 116.8, I believe. 116.8 pipe dream. Is it up on the neck of the bottle too? Oh, we bringing your logic in on this? <laughs> do I have Captain Morgan? I do not, Josh. I need to get some though. Work on my way through current bottles. Can't wait based on my vids. Well, I appreciate it there, Big Bear. Steven upgraded his membership. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support there, Steven. Well, this is good. I like this bottle. This is my favorite Redwood that I've had. I like the Lost Monarch. I like the Grizzly Beast. This one is much sweeter, much more fruit forward for me. Does the patron percentage off merch apply to booze? Uh, there is like the higher tiers get a discount off of booze that we sell. Like you wouldn't get a discount off of this one because we don't do it, but they do get a discount off of the barrel picks. So um, yes, but like not, not exactly, like it's gotta explicitly say, I think that you get that off of, off of booze. Cause I mean, honestly, we're not, mar I, I lost money on some of those last picks just because I think the, the BDN finish and all of those stuff, we lost money on those. Like we weren't marking them up much at all. And then we had a few shipping issues. So it's all good. Like we're not trying to make a ton of money on barrel picks, not our goal. Does it remind you of anything? Ooh, what would it remind me of? that you've had. It actually reminds me a little bit of the Barrel Craft Spirits pick we did last year. I don't think I like it quite as much as that. Um, it's not quite as complex as that one is. What would it remind? I don't know, man. I'm trying to think of what it would remind me of that maybe y'all have had. Just delicious. Steven with the $10 super chat. First super chat. Thank you, Steven. Um, Short barrel toasted, two rum stickers in the mail, nice. So we sent out, for everybody that ordered the rum, uh, the rum barrel pick, that's the first one we tater stickered, but the tater stickers were not printed until after the bottles had shipped out. So again, we were not gonna repeat that because I I had to spend, what it cost me $2 a sticker just to have them printed and shipped to everybody. So that's like four or $500 just to get tater stickers. So we're gonna have to plan ahead because they're gonna have to be at the retailer to apply them to the bottles before they get shipped out. It's the only way we're gonna do it from now on. JL, Kristen is eating hot dogs with mac and cheese while drinking out of approved Queen Glen Cairn. Sounds like a winner all the way around. Is the mac and cheese on the hot dog? Like you gotta put a little, just put a little on top. You know, you can't, like you can eat it separate. You put a little of the mac and cheese on top and, and go at it. Jack Daniels, Tennessee honey. I, I mean, it's good. I don't, I'm not hating on Tennessee honey. Um, I would prefer the wild turkey American honey if you're gonna go with the honey whiskeys though. I thank you and only you for reintroducing me to bourbon. My fiance, not so much. I did, so Jack, um, thank I, I appreciate you thanking me for introducing you or reintroducing you to bourbon. I did not reintroduce you to your fiance. So that's not my fault. I don't blame me. Um, yeah, mac and cheese plus hot dogs plus ketchup. And I know what you're saying, but it's still funny. New to bourbon, having my first benchmark single, Clark said. Nice, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, man, I wanna try this pumpkin beer some more. Everything's been surprisingly delicious. The, the barrel craft was good. This is fantastic. I wish Jill was down here, she would really like that. Um, we are going to bourbon hunt this week in Austin, Texas, uh, Anthony. So we will be, I will be in Austin. I'm driving to Austin on Wednesday. I'll be there Thursday, Friday, and then head back Saturday, stop it in Mississippi. We're going to film a scotch video. I, I know, I know, I know. We're going to do some, I'm having somebody try to convert me to scotch. So we're going to go to their house. They're going to pick five scotches. So y'all let me know, y'all scotch lovers, what five scotches do you think they'll pick to try to convert me to scotch? Pumpkin is disgusting, but that doesn't taste like pumpkin. It doesn't taste like pumpkin. Any favorite Woodenville bottles? I, I mean, the Woodenville stuff I've had is just all right there, Larry. So I haven't had a ton, but I, I appreciate the super chat. 
Are there any particular bottles I need to look for? Man, that, that is, it's not pumpkin. It's just, it is kind of that fall, like, spiciness to it, but it's it's not like that over-the-top pumpkin. That's it. That's good. Ah, uh, a bunch of space sides. Any chance of getting a Blanton's from me? Uh, probably not, Johnny. I mean, not unless you're local and you're here, and I know you. Um, Nate, yeah, where's Nate when you need him? Nate's busy. Nate's got stuff to do. Let's get started on some of these. Should we, should we do these? Is this what we should do? We should try the barrel picks? All right, y'all let me know in the chat. We're gonna go, so we've got a six-year-old, This we got three, three barrels. We've got a six-year-old Knob Creek. We've got a cask strength toasted, which the only place you could get cask strength toasted is from our barrel pick right now. And then we've got a rye, and I think it's a four and a half year Green River rye. So, which one do we start with? Let's save the rye. Let's, I think we should save the rye to the end. Because that's the one, y'all can see these two are open. I We tried these, I want to say on a stream or something. I've had a sample. It's been a minute though. I don't remember what they taste like. But the rye is the only one I have not tried since that night. So let's start with whatever this one is. I don't even know what it is. Toasted barrel. So this is a cask strength toasted barrel right here. Give y'all a little bit of a close up. You got the other way. Got the Brusel sticker right there. Toasted barrel cash strength. Normally these are gonna be 101 proof. This one is 118.5 proof. So quite a bit hotter than the 101 you're normally gonna get on the shelf with toasted barrel. With a short barrel toasted barrel anyway. Yeah, as I said, I had something in that one. What a fresh Glen. Cameron, thanks for getting you into whiskey. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me, man. All right, so this one is an apricot bomb. If it's what I remember, it is just apricot for days to my palate. Like that is all I taste is just like pureed apricots and alcohol, which I surprisingly I like. Like I would never just sit down and eat an apricot, but apparently if you put it in some alcohol, I like it. They're newer or like 94 proof, yeah. Oh, this, yeah, this one's got a great color to it. A little bit of oak. I got a little bit of oak up front. And then just fruit for days. Just fruit for days, man. God almighty knows. So, some toasted barrels, I like some toasted barrels, some toasted barrels I don't. If you would have handed this to me, I'd have said, okay, maybe that's a toasted barrel, but what else did they do to get all those apricot flavors? Because this is much, toasted barrels typically have a little bit of like a bitter oakiness to them, just a touch, like a Michter's toasted barrel. I had some of that last week. Great, love it, but there's a little bit of that bitter oak that lets you know, okay, this is, you know, this has been in some sort of secondary oak container. This one is just much more fruit. Like you get that up front, you get that extra oak up front, but then it's just fruit, which is just unusual. I've never had another toasted barrel like it, but they did a really, really good job with these. Corey Bates with the 499 Super Chat. Appreciate the support there, Corey. Just join the Discord. Yeah, I don't think our bot's working, so somebody, Smokey or somebody, every once in a while, y'all post the, um, like I said, these will be for sale tomorrow at five o'clock central time. We will start dropping these to the highest tier patrons and every 20 minutes, it will be opened up to a new patron tier until they are all exhausted. Um, and I don't know exact barrel, like exact bottle numbers or like counts that we'll have for sale, but I wanna say like we're approaching $200 or $200, 200 bottles, not $200, 200 bottles of each. Like we're approaching that. So it's, uh, it's well on into the hundreds of bottles for each of these that they'll be available. Uh, plans for Austin. I, I'm meeting up with some friends. I've got a little work to do on Thursday. I'm going to do a bourbon hunt. We've got new camera equipment. I've got the new Osmo Pockets I'm really excited about. So we'll go around and do some bourbon hunting probably Thursday, maybe Friday morning, honestly. It might be Friday morning. And then Friday afternoon, I've got a barrel pick with Still Austin. So what is a toasted barrel? Uh, typically, what they're going to do with a toasted barrel 
is the whiskey is going to be aged like it would normally be aged, right? It's gonna be put in a barrel, it's gonna sit there for years, and then some people may take a new barrel and toast it. What a lot of folks will do is take, um, or they'll buy a barrel from a cooper where they took a, a used bourbon barrel and they scraped all the char out of it. So they scraped all that alligator char out of the barrel and then they toasted the wood and then they put this in that toasted barrel and let it sit for however long they let it sit, right? Some folks for a little while, some folks for a long while, and then they, they take it out. So really it's just bourbon that has been finished in a toasted oak barrel. And some will do like a, a normal barrel with a toasted head. Some will do a full toasted barrel. Um, I don't recall exactly what their process here is at short barrel, but whatever it is, that's how people should be toasting things. Let's see what I miss. JFK, the barrel or the liquor in them? Sorry, I missed the question there, JFK. Uh, wild Turkey Generations, haven't had it. And that is a lot for a bottle. $450 for a bottle of Wild Turkey is a lot of money. Appreciate it, Clark. Uh, so like I said, Alex, these will start dropping at 5 p.m. Central to patrons to the highest tier. And then every 20 minutes, it'll open up to a different tier um, throughout, and then at the end of that, once we're through all the tiers, it'll be opened up to the general public. Like once it passes the free tier, it'll go to the newsletter, it'll go to Discord if there are any left, and then it'll just be open for everybody. So we'll rip the password protection off of it. I don't know the source on the toasted. They got a lot of words on the back that I can't read because, you know, eyes are blurry. And uh, I don't know, I might need, I might actually have to go get some glasses or something, but I'm, I'm holding out to the last minute. And it is dark. And it, in my defense, it is dark, but it used to be dark. When I started this stream, it was dark and I, I couldn't see it. Now it's dark and a little blurry. So don't tell Jill that. Nobody tell Jill. Brock is back. Uh, in response to your Wisconsin hunt, blue label cognac finish and green font label J. Henry is the best Wisconsin bourbon representation you can find. Driftless Glen? No, no. I do have some J. Henry stuff here for sure. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, it's, I think it needs a little more time. It just takes forever to age whiskey in that climate. I think short barrel does toasted heads for a minimum of 45 days. I think you're, I, I was gonna, here's the problem with that. That's what I remember as well, J-Rock, but I can't say things like that because I'm just not sure. And then everybody's like, you're wrong. And as, you know, maybe I heard that here. Maybe I heard it there. Maybe I just misremembered. So unless I'm fairly confident, I just try not to say things, but J-Rock thinks they do toasted barrel heads for a minimum of 45 days. Um, I have not mentioned the pricing. Um, I've been dropping it in Discord. Somebody mentioned the pricing here. I think we've already released what the pricing is gonna be in Discord, right? So somebody, somebody that has that, pull up the pricing for me, refresh my memory. I just came back from Vegas and straight into this live stream pretty much today, so I'm a little behind. 80 bucks, okay. So they're gonna be 80 bucks. And honestly, that's just a bottle you're not gonna get anywhere else. Like you're just not gonna get a cash strength toasted barrel from short barrel anywhere else right now. So $79.99 for that one. And that that is hard to beat right there. I mean, and, and so we're putting all of these at MSRP. Everyone, like we didn't mark it up over MSRP at all. Whatever their suggested retail price was is exactly what we're selling them for. Michael with the $5 Super Chat. Appreciate the support there, Michael. Always enjoy these lives and patron hangouts. I'm new in my whiskey journey, but learned a lot from the channel and its members. Worth the 100 proof, 100 proof member. Michael, big baller. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for the support. Um, and we have a good time. So after this stream, I will go to Discord. We have a supporters only channel if you're a patron member. Uh, and we'll have a, an audio chat where everybody can talk, right? You can ask questions. We can do anything we want in there. Old Forester single barrel barrel strength store pick or Four Roses single barrel barrel strength store pick. I'm in love with my Old Forester pick. I normally, like I love Old Forester, but I'm typically gonna choose like a hundred proof pick of theirs over the, the barrel strength stuff. Like I, I just feel like I get a lot more complexity. So if I had to pick most of the time, I'm probably going to go to the, the Four Roses single barrel barrel proof. Steven, love the barrel pick videos. Do you make content for every barrel pick? We try for most of them, yes. Um, that, like, that's just 
that's fun content. Now I will, I will go ahead and let y'all know. I don't, you're gonna let me know because I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and let you know. The barrel pick of short barrel got a little out of hand, okay? Probably two of the next three barrel pick videos we got coming out got a little out of hand. Um, you'll, you'll be able to tell as the volume of my voice goes up throughout the course of the video and words become difficult to grasp, which sometimes that just happens anyway, even if I'm not drinking. Like start of this live stream, I had trouble with some words. But I'm naturally very loud. And the more alcohol I consume, the less I'm able to control that. And so, William Lulu Lemon out of hand. It wasn't quite that, but you know, we'll see how they edited it, right? It, it wasn't that in person, but it might've been edited like that, we'll see. Wasn't as good as the old El Cognac cask, in my opinion. All right, didn't like blends. I mean, that's fine. Um, I haven't had the Cognac cask though, that could be great. Uh, it is flat rate shipping. So all these, it's gonna be $18 flat rate shipping. I, I mean, nothing I can do, but if you buy all three and there are no limits, like you buy two of each, whatever you want, there are no limits on how many of those you can buy. I mean, you probably don't wanna buy them all, but it's $18 to ship them. So, all good. E.H. Taylor, barrel proof. Man, that's a good one. All right, so we're going to do, this is the six-year-old Knob Creek barrel right here. Lululemon's the right kind of out of hand. That's a little inside joke for the patrons right there. We had a little, or actually the Discord, we had a little Discord stream that got out of hand. At least that wasn't me. At least we're laughing at somebody else, right? That's better. Y'all hit, uh, hit the like button for me. 727 people, 189 likes. Let's push that up a little bit. Um, a good substitute for Blanton? Like, dude, just get the benchmark stuff. Like, get a... Ancient, ancient age, get it? Like, they're not quite as good, but they're similar veins. Irish heritage, yeah, we're just loud people. I don't know if I'm Irish, I'm a gamble. You would think probably somewhere on that island, right? Was introduced to E.H. Taylor by a guy recently, new fave? Yeah, it's hard to hate that one, Brandon. Lynn, you're the man good. getting into bourbon recently. Always nice to compare what I think to your reviews. Love all your content, love the bourbon hunting. Well, thanks for the support, Lynn, I appreciate it. Thanks for that super chat. Short barrel chug, uh, we don't chug things here. We enjoy our whiskey. Now this one is much more subtle than the toasted. Like that toasted is just in your face with what it's got going on. This one here is 115.2 proof. Like I said, six-year-old Knob Creek barrel. Uh, in the video, we call it the Jim Beam barrel. I mean, Jim Beam obviously owns Knob Creek. But when I went back over to Short Barrel and we were talking about it, they're like, yeah, the Knob Creek barrel. It's like, what are you talking about? We bought a Jim Beam barrel. They're like, no, that was a Knob Creek barrel. I mean, the DSP on top, on the, the head of the barrel is different for Knob Creek. And it was indeed a Knob Creek barrel. I don't have any spiced rum here, not currently. The camera went out of focus. How did the camera go out of focus? Is the camera out of focus right now? Uh, Jen, how, how much are you drinking, man? It can't be out of focus. It might have went blurry because the internet or something. Uh, favorite benchmark not bonded, single barrel. Um, single barrel, so the, I think the best one I've, I think it was the single, I don't know. I, I would have to sit down and try them all back to back but it was the small batch of the single barrel that was just so freaking good. It is your end, that's all good. That is a really, really nice bottle of Knob Creek though. But it is, I mean, I get it. You're buying a bottle of Knob Creek, right? You can get a 12 year old Knob Creek for cheaper than you can buy that right there. But that is a very interesting, can you get a, Knob Creek single barrel for cheaper than you buy that one right there. Probably not. Foolproof was solid too, you're right. Definitely link your patron in Discord. So if you link your patron in Discord, you can jump into our chat we'll have after this live stream. So Frank, they go on sale five o'clock tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, the video drops of these and then um, at five o'clock central, five o'clock central time, six o'clock Eastern, these go on sale to, to the top, you know, tier patron, and every 20 minutes they move down. So we will we will announce all this on Patreon, so you should be fully aware of when they're going to drop for your tier. 
So what is different about Knob Creek? Knob Creek is gonna be like a high-end Jim Beam product. So it's got that interesting caramel nuttiness, like there's almost a little bit of nuttiness on it there. Uh, a little bit of spice, a little rye spice on it. Like Jim Beam is interesting. I don't like just normal Jim Beam. I mean, as a mixer, it's fine, but it's not anything I would ever uh, drink neat. But stuff, they're limited release stuff. They're really old stuff. They're bookers, they're little books. They're just really interesting. Now you've gotta be into that kind of spicy, nutty, sometimes earthiness that comes with a an aged, an aged Jim, damn choking on my own spit there, an aged Jim Beam product, but oh, gonna have to have a Dr. Pepper. I tell you what, I went to Vegas. I don't know if y'all ever been to Vegas, but everything's dry. My mouth is dry, my throat's dry, had chapped lips. Yeah, almost soft peanut brittle. That's a good way of describing it. Uh, this pick here, again, is 115.2 proof. I'll give y'all a little close up on the bottle there. Got the uh, bruisal sticker right there. And then I got a bunch of words on the back and I can't read those words. If y'all can read those words, just pause it. You can read the words. You can tell me what the words say. I don't know what the words say. Cooper's Craft is good stuff. Going to Vegas in February, nice. I mean, Vegas is fun, not my scene, not my scene. A little tired of it. Really want to find an 18 year Knob Creek? The 18 year is not near worth the price. Is it good? Yes. Is it worth the price markup over 12? No, not even close. Wife brought home three bottles of 15 stars. I've not had it there, Garrett. Oh, WK, let's see, what is that week? WKBRDR6439. Sorry, can't, couldn't make a word out of that. Appreciate the super chat though. Good evening, love your channel and the ability to, lie, to live vicariously through it. Someday I'll have a selection like that. I hope not, I hope not. It is not, like I, I got whiskey stuffed everywhere and I'm kind of tired of it to be honest with you. Drink it all, drink, just get a nice manageable amount of whiskey. Drink all of that with friends, of course. Don't drink it all by yourself, that's sad. Drink it with friends and then buy some more. Like just, just keep rotating it in. They just, half of these are gonna go bad. So, no to Scotch, yeah, I'm not a Scotch fan. But we are, like I said, I am going next Saturday to try to get convinced that Scotch is the true whiskey. We're gonna go to a Scotch enthusiast house, we're gonna film that, and they're gonna try to convert me to Scotch. So, we'll see how that goes. Any age step, this is six year, supposedly a six year Knob Creek barrel. So meet up at TJ's, we get together every once in a while, wake border. Dang it, look at that, J-Rock. J-Rock's on it today, man. On it today. Ah, 12, I'd take the 12 there, Steven. Uh, Kristen with the $5 Super Chat, appreciate the support. JL really wants to know, what does this mean by Knob Creek? Does Short Barrel make this in Knob Creek Barrel? No, okay, so distilleries oftentimes, like, they make a lot of whiskey, right? Like Knob Creek, Jim Beam, all these places make a ton of whiskey. More whiskey than they can sell. And sometimes they sit on it, sometimes they experiment with it. Sometimes if they pull it and it's off profile, or if they just have way too much, they will sell those barrels. So, or they may make, somebody may have it, you know, have a relationship to have it contract distilled at a distillery. Um, there's lots of reasons why distilleries sell barrels, but lots of times they will indeed sell them. So you can go to a broker or you might have a relationship directly and they somehow acquired a bunch of Knob Creek barrels. And so it's whiskey made by Knob Creek, the Knob Creek distillery made by Jim Beam and then sold, right? And so they can't put a Knob Creek label on it. I don't even know if legally they can say that this has Knob Creek juice in it. I can, because I saw the barrels. I can say anything I want. Um, but it's that is a Knob Creek barrel of whiskey. Now, the thing is, is what makes whiskey special, oftentimes it's where it's aged as much as what's in the barrel. Um, you know, how it's aged, where it's aged, the conditions it was, it was subject to. So I don't know if this barrel spent six years at Knob Creek and then got sold and they ended up with it, 
I don't know if it was made and spent a year there and they kicked it out and somebody bought it and it's been aging in Georgia for five years. Like you just don't really know uh, what that barrel's been through, but I know that Knob Creek made it and it is the same whiskey that would have been in a Knob Creek, you know, nine release, 12 release, any of those, but for some reason or another, that barrel got sold instead. So with that, you know, and it's a single barrel, so you can get some uniqueness. Like, we need to try, I'm gonna try this versus the youngest Knob Creek I have. I wanna see how this stacks up to some Knob Creek. I think I've got some back here. Here's a nine, 110 proof. What proof is ours? What do we say, 115? Let's do that. We're gonna try that versus 110 proof Knob Creek 9. Which is, da this is dangerous for me to do. Because what is this bottle? Y'all tell me what this bottle costs. Probably cheaper than we're selling our single barrel for. So I'm probably shooting myself in the foot right here. If I tell y'all this nine is better, I'm just screwing myself up. Bobby G, which comes first? Ben Holiday Pick or the new studio on a live stream? Ben Holiday Pick, 100%. So I, I have the, the studios kind of pulled together in there, but we're having somebody build the, the backdrop, the shelves and stuff. I've made a deposit on that, so it is in progress of being made, but they're not fast. And so, uh, no more details on the Opelika Bourbon Festival yet, but that's a good reminder. Thank you, Josh, I'm gonna follow up on that. It'll be in the spring, so we've got a little bit of time, but plans need to be nailed down for sure. Uh, Jacob, the toasted is fantastic. Like that's, it's so good. It's so different than anything else out there. It's just like apricot and oak. Super Cleaner, did you make it to liquor lineup? If so, did they have the Frey Ranch pick? Uh, so they had a Frey Ranch pick. I did not make it, somebody made it for me. Uh, they did have the Frey Ranch pick, but I got Jill, a buddy of mine that lives out there, had the Frey Ranch pick they have now is different than the one that we really enjoyed. Um, I don't know if it's better or worse, don't know anything about that pick, but a buddy of mine had a bottle of the exact pick I bought last time that I love so much. So I got Jill an entire new bottle, and I'll show it to you so you know exactly what it looks like. It's the tater sticker here on the back, right? That Y'all see that? That tater sticker is the one that is just out of this world good. And so I bought this one, got this one for her while we were there, so she's super excited about that. Okay, so I forget which one I poured. I think this is ours and this is the Knob Creek 9. That's good, the Knob Creek 9 is so good. Ours is on par with it. It's on par with it. I don't know if it's significantly better but it's also 100, like this is 120 proof. That helps it a little bit, but they're very similar. I think this one is a little sweeter. Not quite as nutty. And that one's, yeah, a little nutty, not quite as sweet. So a little subtle difference, but I wouldn't have, other than maybe the nuttiness coming from a little more age, I wouldn't have said those have a significant difference in age. Do not have any black or in black velvet. Don't have any, I don't think. Uh, ben Holiday, one barrel and barrel and bell me. Nice. Uh, the toasted's gonna be good. So, what proof do I like on high proof? I, I like high proof on almost everything. 105 plus proof. Um, the rise are typically cask strength that I like the most. So, the Jack Daniels limited release from 2020. The uh, Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof, Michter's barrel strength rise. So I like bourbon friendly rise with a lot of proof. My favorite Dom Creek's just 12. $60 here in Florida. So this is gonna be a little different expression of that. Like it very much is like a Knob Creek nine single barrel. Ah, uh, brand new to bourbon hype, just learning about all the different flavors. So what you wanna do if you wanna to try to start picking up some of these flavors is just get yourself a couple of Glen Cairns and compare them. Like just have small pours of several bottles and compare, like try one, try the other one, and you really start picking up 
a lot of difference. If you're just sitting down and having one pour of something, then you're just gonna say that's good or that's bad. Like it's good or it's not good. But if you try them, you can say, okay, now I see this one's different in this way. And you start trying to identify those uh, flavors and what makes it different. Two more likes to 300, one more it looks like. Y'all keep, come on, 860 people, let's pump those likes for me, I appreciate it. Ordered my first Glen Cairn, Jesse, awesome, appreciate that. We're shipping out a lot of those Glen Cairns. I'm about to have to order some more. And like I said, we just got these, I'm gonna pour this out so y'all can see. I may be an old fashioned earlier, but we just got these Bruzel, um, it's all fogged up. Anyway, there's we got Bruzel rocks glasses now. Can't get them unfogged. Should, I could go get a, I could go get a fresh one, but they're way over there. 805 represent. <laughs> I say that, and we're down to like 700. So we ran 100 people off, just like just for asking for likes. The barrel bourbon is private release Woodman Select by Woodman's. Could be interesting. I, like some of those barrel um, private selects are fantastic. Like really are. Ah, uh, did you like that Hidden Hill bottle you hunted in Springfield? Um, it, what's it, the Hidden Hills? What's it called? Hidden Barn. Hidden Barn. And absolutely not. No, not even close. Uh, uh no, ne negative. No, mm -mm. no, wasn't my thing. I think it's French Oak Stave. I think if I'm remembering correctly, and I'm not a French Oak Stave guy. So kind of got got on, I got got on that one. But that happens a lot. When you go in and you ask for recommendations, a lot of those recommendations are really bad. It happens. Uh, anything from Canada you would recommend? Yeah, man, you know, Crown Royal. <laughs> uh, not, not really. I haven't had a lot, like some of those Canadian whiskeys, they're super high proof. They're kind of like light whiskeys, but I haven't found a lot of those I like. She oversold, she, she went hard, she did. We don't need the hundred losers that let, now we're down 200 people. Well, I'm just killing this stream. What am I doing? Ooh, God, that smells so, ooh, my God. This is the only one I haven't had since that day. And it's funny because like, if I talk to folks like, um, like Spillway, like the folks at Spillway, love those guys. But you talk to people who own liquor stores and rise don't sell. So they're afraid of rise. They don't want to buy a lot of rise because it's hard to convince people to try rise. But some of the better picks we've done have been rise. And that right there is just beautiful on the nose. Besides the Russell's 13, what's the favorite? Single barrel. I need to try more Old Elks. The ones I have have just been okay. Maybe I haven't tried enough. Mm. So any reason in particular that, that people don't like rise or? Um, I do like the Still Austin, Jesse. We, we're doing a barrel pick with them on Friday. So but like people are just afraid of rise. They just don't know what they are, right? People are bourbon drinkers. They want bourbon. And so unless you're pouring samples, they just don't, like if you pour them a sample of a rye, they, they, might, they might take it, but they just don't know. So with bourbon, it's gonna be 51% corn. And on a rye, it's gonna be, you know, the predominant grain is rye. It doesn't meet that like corn requirement of 51%. But this one smells like spicy, a little bit of herbal, just like a nice caramel spiciness to it. God, that is just beautiful. That, that's one of the better ryes I own. That is one of the better ryes I own. It doesn't have the heat. What's the proof on this? 118 proof. How does it not have the heat? Like it does not drink like it's that hot. Like normally, like the, the Michter's barrel strength rise just, it just, it's got some heat to it, right? You really feel the burn on those. This one, Caramel forward, easily approachable. On the mid palate, the rye starts to develop and it leaves you with just a nice kind of herbal rye finish. Um, nice complexity to it. Like just a really beautifully crafted rye. This is a four and a half year old rye. I can't, 
imagine how good Green River's rides are gonna be once they're six, seven, eight years old. I, see, I don't even have the cut, the cut above rye pick, Tommy, that's the problem, is I don't even have it. So we shipped all those to New York. Every one of them went to New York and we were holding them. We had so many problems with shipping because we were combining orders and we had two or three barrel picks going out together. And so I just told them to hold them all in case there were problems shipping and we would have some backup bottles. And so I have not tried that one since we filmed that video. So I, I can't compare it to that one. Can't even compare it. Now that's a rum finished rye, whereas this is just a straight up rye. Like this one's not finished in anything. Um, so the straight up rye is kind of interesting because it you know, has no additive flavors like that rum finish is gonna be. So rye is it considered bourbon? No, this is not a bourbon. This is a rye whiskey. Uh, straight rye whiskey. Somebody tell me what straight rye means. I don't know. Y'all educate me. J-Rock came through on this one. J-Rock said, he, look at J-Rock pimping himself, referring to himself in the third person there in the super chat. That's a good rye. That is, uh, like, it's not, it's not the Mictor's Barrel Strength rye. It's not the limited edition rye, but it'll bat with just about any other rye I own. Like, I would love to put that one in some blinds for folks because they're like, I really think folks are gonna be surprised by that rye. Did I get picked in the Alabama ABC annual lotto this time? Taylor's Bourbon Challenge with the first Super Chat. Appreciate it, Taylor. Um, no, I did not. I do not win anything. I never win. That's not a thing I normally do. And I didn't get picked and nobody I know got picked. So I did have somebody reach out that got third or a family member got third up in Madison, which is like three hours from here. We might go up and film that, we might not. I don't know if I'll make it up there. Um, that's a long way, and it just depends on what day it falls on. Appreciate it, Jeremiah. McAllen Anniversary Malt? I don't know, man, that's not, not my jam. It's not a bourbon, it's not my thing. So how does it compare to the Jack Daniel Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rise? I think I got one in here somewhere. I don't see it. Uh, it's gonna be in that vein. It's gonna be similar. I think this might have a little more complexity, a little more rye forward. It doesn't drink as hot as those. Like those just tend to feel a little more heat, but like that's, it's, it's probably of that quality. Yeah. What's your go-to bourbon for an old fashioned? We make a lot of old fashions here with ancient, ancient age, 10 star. Coming down to Auburn, Kyle's coming to Auburn for the walk-up line. I might, like, I don't know, is it even worth it? So maybe Jill might join us here in a bit. We'll see. I don't know. We're only an hour in and we've accomplished everything we want to accomplish. So I don't know. Might call it here in just a little while, in 30 minutes or so, and head over to the chat in Discord. Salad Eaters from India. Irish and blended scotch whiskey is very popular here. What's your take on it? I'm not a huge fan of pot stilled malted whiskeys as all Irish and scotch whiskeys are. So just not, not my jam. I prefer a good bourbon and I would prefer a good rye. Am I drinking water too? No, we got a Dr. Pepper right here. Um, this, this is probably a little more rye forward than a Michter's rye. Like Michter's rye is very bourbon-esque with just a touch of rye. This one just eases you into rye just a little more, but not over the top. Uh, yeah, the Sioux Falls video, I think might be Friday's video. Uh, Nomad, I think that might be. And then Spillway, maybe, I don't know when Spillway's coming. Should be soon though. Ever coming to St. Louis? Sure, it's on the list. We haven't done it yet, but it's gonna happen. What's Jill doing tonight? Kristen wants to know. She's got some folks here, they're upstairs. I don't know what they're doing. I don't, I don't know. I don't ask questions. I don't, here's, here's a little, little, little trick. If you wanna stay married, this is a little trick. If you wanna be married for a very long time, don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Just don't work. She's like, I can't stream tonight. I was like, that sounds good. I'll do it myself. Oh uh, yeah, I know Glenn, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Out of the three picks we've done. Mm. So here's the thing, this is a really good rye, really good rye. It does have the only colored brusel sticker there. Let me get you, get you a close up on that. All the other ones are black and white. This one is kind of brown with the gold. That's pretty freaking cool. Don't know why they all didn't look like that one. 
Um, if you're if you're kind of uncertain about rye, this is a good introduction to rye. Like that's that's a good rye whiskey. But not everybody's into rye. The Knob Creek is super interesting. Like I, I love this bottle. This is probably my favorite just drinking bottle because I tend to lean more uh, bourbon. So this is just like more quintessential bourbon, right? It's not finished in toast. It's not a rye. This is more bourbon. So I would tend to just say, this is probably the bottle that'll get drank first here. But the toasted barrel is the most unique of them that you're not gonna get anywhere else. Like a cask strength, and they do a really good job toasting. So a cask strength toasted, but at the same time, if you're not into, you know, kind of different things, like this is not middle of the road. This is very toasted apricot finish. So this is probably the most interesting. So if I was buying one, this would probably be the one I would get. Cause like, although this is great, you can get a Knob Creek. You can, you, you can buy Knob Creek somewhere. Um, you can get a really nice rice somewhere because rice are not super hyped. So probably the toasted would be, if I just picked one, probably be the toasted. Randy got his tater sticker for the rum. Nice. Is $100 a good price for a 10 year Eagle Rare? No, absolutely not. Not even close. That is twice, that is double a good price. I only buy Eagle Rare if it's under $50. Appreciate it, William. Thank you. How much do you pay for a Mictor's Rye? I think 42 bucks is a good price. I, I, I would pay that for it. I honestly, I think it was a little more than that where I bought it like a normal Mictor's Rye. Still haven't got the rum sticker, Dragon said. They came in envelopes. Everybody, you know, they, they all went out to everybody who bought one. We do have a few extra, so if you don't get it by Friday, let me know. We'll see. It should have, like, Jill hand wrote, she hand wrote like 50 uh, envelopes and sent them out. I was like, babe, well, let's, I just ordered some, some decals, printed them out on the computer, so it's, it's like the Bruzel Tater sticker department. Um, so you ought to know what it is. Every time I get a beer camping. Um, Evan Williams said, I haven't had the 1783. I need that. Mictors was closed today. Is it a holiday? What about a 12 year old Weller? How much would you pay? That's tough questions, man. Um, I don't like it. Like it's, it's a $250 bottle everywhere I see it. And I don't think it's worth that. So usually if I really need one, I can find a friend that'll get me one for a hundred bucks or so. When you go on bourbon hunting next? Austin, Texas this week. Barrel spice and proof spice. Well, I mean, barrel spice is gonna be like, to me, when you're talking about like rye spice, it has like an herbal kind of tea note to it. Um, and that's that's what you're picking up as, as you know, kind of that rye spice. Um, or, so you're talking about like barrel spice though. Um, well, I mean, proof spice is just heat on your palate, right? Like it's a physical reaction, not a flavor. Gotcha. So you're not actually rye spice, talking about barrel spice. I gotcha. Oh, uh, Weller 107 max to pay, 100 bucks. 100 bucks, I'll buy 107 all day. More than that, I won't pay it. Pay 32 bucks for a Weller 12? Yeah. Yeah, and so I, like, I don't drink them a lot, so I don't, I don't need them very often. I'm just, I like to have them here because people want to try them. So I'll pay an extra markup just to have them here, but I'm never drinking it at $100. Sold me on the toasted. Gonna get the straight bourbon, but you're selling the toasted. I mean, we need to sell them both. <laughs> need to, about all it's worth. I agree, I agree. So like, that's why it's weird when people ask me those questions is one, like the great thing is, is, you know, we've been lucky enough to have a YouTube channel to help support a ridiculous bourbon um, budget. And we also, like most of these bottles I don't drink, like most of these bottles will be consumed by somebody else. And so like, I like to have them for other people when we're, when we're sharing and enjoying. And if somebody asks, I can go grab one. Um, so we want them for those. If I were just sitting down and drinking it, I'd try to get it for as close to MSRP as I could. Ben Holiday One Barrel. Nice, we've got a few of those back here. What XO should I get? The only one I've tried is the, um, I don't know where it went, Innkeeper's Blend, and that one's really good. Pinhook does some age statement private barrel rise. I'll have to hit them up, I didn't realize. 
Uh, like I said, we did a video in Orlando. We were really in Oviedo. I think that's how we pronounce it. Everybody got mad at me. Um, but I think it's Oviedo, Oviedo is how I pronounced it because that's how you spell it. Like if you want it Oviedo, just spell it Oviedo. Uh, we, we did several, and, and some of them were really good, really interesting. Like I think it was Tom, I forget the name of Tom's store, but he was a fun guy and we found some interesting bottles. So check out that video if you would. Appreciate it, Brandon. Take it, take it easy, man. Enjoy it. 4 a.m. does come mighty early. Uh, I'm gladly pay you Tuesday for a sip of WLW today. Yeah, I know how that goes. Turning 21 tomorrow, what bourbon would you recommend for a beginner? We got a whole video uh, to, uh, on the channel about best bourbon for beginners. And, I, and I'm going to refer you to that because we go through why. Like, I want you to try several and start to develop your own flavor profile. Uh, Booker's, some of the Booker's batches are fantastic. Some are okay. But they're like they're they're a mood, right? Like I, I have to be in the mood for those. I'm not just gonna go do them um, randomly. Like I'm never gonna come down here and just drink a Booker's. It's not gonna happen. Uh, I could go drink your Eagle Rare E. H. Taylor if you need help. I mean, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. The Kirkland's I have is not good, Aaron. Why don't you open up a bar? We may someday. We may. Who knows? I'm dumb enough to try. Um, dumb enough to try because it's. Like owning a restaurant's hard. I owned a barbecue restaurant for a while and I said I would never get back into food service. And that's close enough, but we might, if this channel continues to grow and do, you know, allow us to do dumb things, we will continue to do dumb things with it. Uh, Jack Daniels Master Distillers. I think I've got a few of those around here. They're not good. The ones I have are not good. Orlando is Orlando, yeah. Booker's Apprentice Batch is trash. The ones I have here, we just finished off last night. I had some friends over and they drank the rest of my, I think it was Granny's Batch. I do have a backup of it though. Uh, Noah's Mill's okay. I'm not a fan of it, but it, it's all right. It's made by Willet. It's, you know, that's typical kind of, you know, herbal Willet flavor and it's okay. Yes, this Redwood Empire, I do believe is distilled by them. I, I believe so, yes. Baker's is where it's at 50 bucks for a Baker 7. That's the Jim Beam you need to be, you need to be um, drinking. Russell says I can call it Maggie. You talking about the bar I should open? Call it Maggie's, Maggie's Place. It's not a bad name. We should probably call it Bruzel though. Put a bunch of beer taps in there to go with it. You know, just branding and all. While in Austin, you should try Whiskey Cake Restaurant. Their selection is 250 plus bottles. I may do that. I, it's a very packed agenda while I'm in Austin. Uh, flying off the shelves, have you tried it? Yeah, I've got some still Austin cash strength and the barrel picks we're doing with them Friday will be cash strength. We get Blanton's for $65 in Louisiana, go for buy all you can at that price, man. If I love Old Forester and Buffalo Trace, like Larson a lot, but it seems to be more mid heavy like Evan Williams, White label, Jesus, that's complicated, man. You need like a freaking degree in science to figure out your taste palettes there. So you like Old Forster, I'm assuming that's rye and Buffalo Trace. So Larson needs a weeded. So you're liking sweet, I don't know about old, I haven't tried Old Forster rye in a long time. Um, Buffalo Trace and Old Forster rye are clear winners. Sub 60 bucks. Do me a favor, if you like those sweet ones, go buy some of the benchmark stuff at 20-ish dollars. Um, those are, you know, super sweet Buffalo Trace kind of profiles. See if you can find a Bowman uh, and then get a Four Roses single barrel. Gonna have a little more oak on that than the ones you're used to though. Maggie's Fun Bar and Grill. That's a, you know, we call it Maggie's and all the proceeds go toward keeping an old Lincoln on the road. Dude, there's one came up for sale today. It is a black on black on black, 73 Lincoln Continental Coupe that is absolutely pristine and perfect. And it is three times what I paid for Maggie and I wished I had the money because I want every single bit of it. It's a beautiful car. Where in Louisiana? See, I don't. Where, where's what in Louisiana? What did I miss? 
Did I, did I say something about Louisiana? I didn't say anything about Louisiana, did I? Yeah, Joski, take it easy. Cigars and spirits in New England, the rye is super good. I agree the sour mash is a little disappointing. Good. The sour mash is the least of the mixer stuff for me, for sure. Uh, just got back from the Bowman. I, I need to, we need to do some stuff with them. But again, it's owned by Sazerac. Like I gotta go, you don't really get access to them unless you've sold a whole bunch of Sazerac stuff. Whiskey Cake, it's a great restaurant, good for a work dinner, okay. Might do that. We've got some work stuff going on there. Which wool cut would you recommend? I mean, it's all 17. It's all Barton stuff, man. Just grab a 1792. You're probably better off. Uh, any Texas bourbons you're looking for? No, not really. I mean, I wouldn't mind a cowboy on the shelf, a Garrison Brothers cowboy, but like, I'm not really actively looking for it. Um, and if I saw it in a store at MSRP, I would debate whether or not I'm going to pay that for it. Uh, so BH, we're doing the pick Friday. Um, I don't know when it, like that's the problem with barrel picks. That's the problem we're having. We're learning, we're learning. We're still new to this. Um, we've done what, 15, 16 picks now and they're, some of them are still slowly starting to roll out. But we, um, you do the pick and then you just don't know when it's coming. Like you have no clue. They'll give you a range, but nobody listens to that range. Nobody pays attention to what they told you. As Soon as they tell you that range, it is just in the ether and nobody cares. What's the Cowboy MSRP? I, I, Y'all tell me, I don't know. Is it like 200, $250 or something? I, I could be wrong. Any idea when the Blood Oath drops again? Normally they drop in fall, so I think they're out right now. How's that Fiddler? Not my jam. Not my thing. I think that's another one of those that's like finished in some sort of oak or French oak or something, right? Not my thing. Kristen, Jeremy needs a refill. Kristen, let Jeremy Get a re take it, would you please help him out and refill his drink? Thank you, I would appreciate it very much if you would make sure that Jeremy has all the whiskey he needs. Or actually better yet, Jeremy, get off your butt, man, and get some whiskey. Kristen's trying to enjoy the stream, what are you doing? Like, why is your stream experience more important than hers? Yeah, 230, $230. Sitting on the shelf, yeah. See, he, he said, I'm so great. And then I backtracked on all of it right there. And now let's wait until he says, what are you doing to me? <laughs> How was SEMA? So last week we were at SEMA, the automotive trade show, trying to sell some e-commerce. We do a lot of e-commerce for automotive brands. And we got to figure out how to like cross promote or something. I need more, I need more sales to afford more whiskey. <laughs> well, not now, JL says. <laughs> uh, I haven't had the 2023 non Creek 18, but I had last year's. Um, but no, SEMA was fun. It was a uh, it was a good time. It was a lot of work. Like I didn't I didn't roam around the conference like I have been able to in the past. But still had a good time. A lot of good dinners. Would you be willing to pour the Eagle Rare? Clark says. Sure. What, I mean, is there anything you want to know about Eagle Rare? Or you just want me to drink all of mine. I'll pour, I'll make that pour next. Thoughts on Blue Note Uncut. I, they're on my list for next year. We'll probably do a Blue Note pick, if they'll have us. Like, I haven't reached out to them yet. Um, but it's good, like, they're cheap. They're like $50 for a, a, a barrel strength single barrel, I think 50, $55 I see them for. Uh, and that is just a stupid price for a single barrel cast strength from a small distillery at this point, like from a small label, even if they didn't distill it. Uh, just crazy affordable. How do you prevent oxidation? You do not. Don't open your bottles or drink them moderately quickly. Like that's that's really the only way, Ryan. Once they get oxygen in there, they're gonna start to oxidize. Eagle Rare sucks? I can't agree with that. I can't agree with that. Yeah, Russell's 13 depends on the batch. Some batches are good, some batches are great. They're all good. They're not, I haven't had one that's like worth the secondary price, but I do like them. Um, a hunt and soak out. So I've got to be back out in Vegas in January. I think at that point we're going to, we got to go to Frey Ranch. I need to, Jill, Jill did not give me a date. So I'm just going to pick the date. I'm just going to pick the date. So I'm going to pick the date. I'm going to get with Frey Ranch 
And then I'm gonna head over to California. I don't know if I'll get Southern Cal. It may be like whatever's close to Fallon, um, but we definitely need to do some California bourbon hunting. All right, I think I've got one more clean Glen Cairn right here. I keep going back to this beer, man. This is... I thought I would hate that, and I do not. I do not hate that. I would not drink two of them. I would not have two full beers of that, but I would definitely drink one and enjoy it very much, for sure. Let's see. Now, this Eagle Rare is a store pick from somebody, probably Alabama ABC. And I think most of my store picks are um, of that, and Beach Sand's going to have one with me here. So, yeah, this is Alabama ABC, which the Eagle Rare is one of those store picks that have, it's usually quite a bit better than Eagle Rare. Like, people can pick one that's either a little more fruit forward or a little more oaky, um, so they could be really interesting. We're gonna get to Oregon. I just, I don't know if we'll do it next year, honestly. It might be year after. We'll see how the we'll see how the year goes. You never can tell. But our focus for this year is try to get more up the East Coast because we haven't really done a lot. Uh, brown ales, Scotch ales, typically what I'm drinking rye bread if or rye bread if I'm uh, if I'm drinking a uh, a beer. Man, like come on. That's just candy, man. It's just candy. This one is a little more oak forward than a normal Eagle Rare. So the, the oak is a little harsher. Oh, South Dakota's fun. That video is going to be fun. We're, I'm, afraid a, a, I'm afraid a guy that was really nice to us is going to get fired after that video comes out, though. <laughs> I'll tell you that story here in a second. Let me finish this Eagle Rare. Yeah, this one's not my favorite Eagle Rare. It honestly tastes a little oxidized. I think it's just the oakiness. Um, this one's not my favorite. Uh, I have some, uh, just like normal Eagle Rares, obviously a little better balance than this one. This one is much oakier. I would not have picked this barrel of Eagle Rare. But in general, Eagle Rare is delicious. And that's still delicious. It's just a little harsher on the oak than a normal Eagle Rare would be. Uh, but we went to South Dakota, so I went to South Dakota, and we had a local tour guide, a gentleman that lives around there, Sioux Falls, and we rolled up, and he took me to some liquor stores, and we pulled up at this one, and this guy was sitting outside, and I guess I, probably smoking, I don't even recall, he was just standing out front, and we walked up, and he recognized me, and we sat out there and talked, I don't know how much, I haven't seen the video, I don't know how much will get edited out, but we talked probably for 30 minutes out in front of this store, and then we went in and, you know, they had a decent selection and he went into the back. He's like, yeah, the good stuff's in the back. The boss kind of keeps it locked up, but there's a few things I could pull out. And he pulled out something. And I was like, yeah, that's, I mean, I get that just about anywhere or not. Thank you though. Appreciate that. And then he went back and he came back out with a Stag Junior. Um, Stag, don't call me Junior, you know, didn't, didn't have the Junior logo. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure this guy does not have the authority to be selling this bottle. But he was okay doing it. And I was like, I, who am I? I don't know. I don't know. He said he did. He said he could sell it. And so he's like, yeah, the boss kind of keeps it. Like, you come back tomorrow, the boss will be here. You might, you know, you might get something else. And I went back the next day and the boss was there. And he's like, yeah, man, we don't have any allocated stuff. <laughs> I was like, well, I know better. I mean, I know better than that, but... Okay, you know, that's fine. I'll take the stag, I was happy with that. But I did get a stag in South Dakota. Jordan, so I talked to Blue Note Rep recently. They're pulling back on doing as many barrel picks next year. Oh, that's gonna suck a little bit. But honestly, that's better. Do less of them. Then I, you know, give me one of those you're doing less of. I think if we don't have enough clout to get a Blue Note pick, we're not, like, we don't have enough clout. Like, that's, that's gonna be painful. That would hurt my feelings if I don't have enough clout to get a blue note pick, to be honest with you. Uh, which stag batch was it? I, it's back there, man. It was it was whatever the latest one was for, was it three months ago? I don't know if they've come out with one since. Three months ago, whatever the last one was, I think that's what it was. Um, I haven't opened it. I still have one opened. Just had some Eagle Rare too, JB says. Eagle Rare is delicious. 
50 to 100 proof NYE party to help you clear out your whiskey collection. I, I don't know. I mean, that it might be interesting. Here's the problem. I mean, I don't know how many patrons we have at the 50 and 100 proof tier. A few. At just, I think it's like three at the 100 proof last time I checked, and then a few at the 50. I mean, 50 obviously bigger than the 100. Um, here's what I want to do is I'm hoping, it, first of all, it's just weird to have people at the house. And Jill's much more cautious than I am. I was like, let's have some people, you know, whatever, let's, let's do it. But then we, you know, having a bunch of people here you don't know is kind of, kind of weird. It really is. And it's problematic for many reasons. And so we're hoping that this time next year, can we find and acquire a building to build a bar and do stuff? And then we could have people to that. And it's a lot easier to have a bunch of people over than it is to have them at your home. So hopefully we can work that out. How much is Eagle Rare where you live? Here in Alabama, you've got to go wait in line. So it's five hours of your life plus, I don't know what, $35, $39, something like that. It's not much. Um, on my hunts, I find it pretty regularly at about 45 bucks. Do you have 23 Mictors 10? Be. Um, I might have one on the way. I don't own a 23 Mictors 10. I did just get a Mictors 10, but I think it was a 22 or something like that. Um, or maybe, I don't know, there's one year they didn't release it. It's not that, but I did just get one, but it's not this year's release. Um, I think I might have a 23 Mictors 10 on the way. I'm not 100% sure what batch it is. Thoughts on the best distillery of the year? My pick is Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof over 130 is tops. Distillery of the year. Like obviously Buffalo Trace is making a lot of limited stuff none of us are ever gonna taste. Um, who else is doing something to answer? Jack Daniels dropped a lot of really fun things this year. So it could be that. Um, I'm looking at like who else is doing anything really different this year than what they've done in the past, not just dropping the same stuff. So I, I would say your argument is valid. I haven't seen anything that's like super new or different or, you know, if, and, and it's, I mean, especially if it's major distillery, right? 13th Colonies is killing it. They're like, but is that like distillery of the year? The double oak is super popular. Our cast strength bourbon is gonna be really good. Um, 13th is doing a lot of great stuff, so for sure. But like, the problem with that is, is winning an award like Distillery of the Year, although I don't know who's giving these awards out, uh, how many people have actually tried a 13th colony? Like really limited distribution, right? Oh, JD12, like, so I might, I might have won a really, really large deal at work off of a bottle of Jack Daniels 10. So I gave a friend a bottle. We went, we had a bourbon event at SEMA, had, you know, 20, 30 people there. And then we had some whiskey left. One of them was a bottle of Jack 10. So a friend of mine came by the booth and I gave him that bottle and he was having dinner with a business that's like a prime prospect for my e-commerce business. And he's like, hey, they need some e-commerce. And we were drinking that Jack 10, so I mentioned you. Um, so he introduced us to them based off the Jack 10 that I gave him. So I, that might be the best bottle of Jack 10 I've ever bought. And it was one of the Jack 10s. Actually, it wasn't. I, I got it from a friend out in Vegas. So funny, like business is a weird thing, man. Uh, what's your take on Patron? Oh, Patron. I like, dude, I don't, I don't drink Patron. Total Wine near me always tries to steer people looking for eager, yeah. Total Wine, like dude, the major chains, you just can't take their recommendations. The problem with the major chains is I feel like a lot of those folks are trained to make recommendations on like their house brand stuff. Like they train people to say, hey, if you like that, you can't get it, try this thing over here. And every time I say yes, because it, it's like, that's good, that's just good content. They say it, I'm, if I'm gonna ask for your recommendation and you give it to me, I'm typically gonna take it unless I just know you're full of crap. 
uh, but almost always, not always, but almost always, they are indeed full of crap. Like almost always those recommendations are not even close to the thing they're comparing it to. So I forget which video it was. The person was like, oh yeah, this is like if you blended a Weller and uh, what was it like a Weller and a Blattens together, it's gonna say like, this is not, that was, it was French Oak Stave. This is not even close. What are you talking about? So not, yeah, this, the big small guy probably take the recommendation. Big chain, I just, I will not take recommendations anymore. Maybe a Brusel tour bus to invite the high tiers to travel while bourbon hunting. So Jeff, next year, what we're looking to do is we're going to have, we're gonna have a much more structured schedule around bourbon hunting. So I'm, I'm gonna plan a road trip and we're going to go on this road trip, at, but like we will have more time at each place. So like our road trip we did this year, it was 17 days and we slept in the same bed like two times only because we had to. Um, up the East Coast, we're gonna take more time and we may just do a portion of it, come back home, rest, do another portion later in the year. But we're gonna try to have more like meetups and get togethers and just have more structure around it so people know where we're gonna be and actually do some more fun stuff with y'all. Like that's what we wanna do. And we're not avoiding doing that. We're not like purposefully trying to, you know, to keep y'all out of this. Like we, we really view this channel as an experience and the ability to, to share experiences with y'all. But um, right now we're just, we're just disorganized and we're just like, hey, there's an opportunity, let's go take it, right? And so we're just trying to think ahead more now so we're trying to think ahead more on barrel picks. We're trying to think ahead more on trips and where we're gonna be and, excuse me, all these different things. And that just allows us to share that more with y'all, so. Bourbon van that runs on bad bourbon. Yeah, we're just gonna have the Weller van. Yeah, the B-Team van that we're, we're gonna do, we are going to do a B-Team van at some point. I have a bottle of Jack Daniels 2012 Holiday Select sitting in front of me. Send it to me, man. You don't want to drink that crap. That's so old. That's like freaking 12 years old, man. You don't want to drink that. You want to just send it on over. I'll check it. I'll, let me make sure it's good first. Um, I hear Woodford Double Oak. Oh, the Woodford Double Oak's fantastic, for sure. What a green label my ABC just had today and I missed out. Hate to hear that, Clark. Uh, Yamakaze Toy, I haven't had it. That's gonna be more of a malted whiskey, not my team. Total Wine taught me into the McFarland 12, didn't like it at all, gave it away. I mean, Total Wine is cool, but when they when they recommend into the house brands, man, it just gets out of hand, it really does. For the uninitiated, do the Eagle Rare store picks range of proof? No, they're all the same proof. So they're all gonna be that 90 proof Eagle Rare um, they just might be more fruit, they might be more oak. Um, you know, lots of them are, are really more interesting than the regular release Eagle Rare. This particular one, just a little too oaky. Is there a bourbon that has a similar flavor profile to Four Roses Single Barrel? I mean, Four Roses Single Barrel is kind of a fruity caramel to me, but it depends, all, like if you're talking about the normal single barrel, I think those are a particular recipe. Um, somebody make some recommendations on what would be similar to a Four Roses single barrel. Favorite non-allocated cask strength bourbon? Wow, that's a, I like that question, Garrett. I like that question. Uh, it's a tough question. Well, that's allocated, Never mind. Um, like what is a cask strength bourbon Old Forster 1920, is that cash strength? It's high proof. It's gotta be that. I don't know technically if that's cash strength or if it's just a high proof. Um, it's gotta be, it's gotta be 1920. Like it's gotta be. Dawning Ambition with the Monster Super Chat. Appreciate the support there. Recently started trying new bourbons with my fiance and we have been loving the whole journey. Just tried Clyde May Single Barrel and I'm really enjoying it. Thank you for all that you do for the community. Thank you. And I, like, it completely slipped my mind. We still got the Clyde May stuff coming. 
Um, it's not cash strength. They, it's like 105, 100, I think it's 105 proof stuff we've got coming. Those should be coming really soon as well. So, Larceny, that's allocated though. The barrel proof, that, yeah, the barrel proof's allocated. That's what we're talking about. Penelope cash strength. That's a contender, Wyatt. That is a contender for sure. Yeah, so it's one, so if it's, if it's not that, it's gotta be the Penelope cash strength, which is MGP stuff. Still Austin cask, really good. That's a contender, but not everybody can get that either. That's pretty limited distribution. I need a fresh review on the Booker's, tw I don't have the 202303. Um, I don't think I've had the red breast cat. I've had some red breast, but I don't think I've had the cash strength. Do you still go to drops? Yeah, I go to drops. I, I don't, we don't film them all. Like it's just kind of redundant, but sure. Uh, what bourbon would be your holy grail? Brandon, I'm a weird guy. Like, I just kind of like what I have, right? So I'm not always wanting what the next thing is. I mean, it's interesting for content, but it's the really, really stupidly expensive bottles, like a Double Eagle and stuff like that, that are holy grails. Like, I'd love to find, I would buy a Double Eagle at two grand just to pop the cork on it and drink it with a bunch of people. Like, I would do it. Um, just because it's, what, a $10,000, $20,000 bourbon, depending on the year. But I'm just not, I'm not gonna go out of my way to, to try to obtain those bottles. Jason with a big time super chat, man. Appreciate the support. I appreciate you and your channel. Keep it up. Thank you, Jason. Maker's Mark Cash, yeah, that's not my favorite. That's not my favorite. Yeah. I mean, it's good. It's not my favorite. It is better than the normal Maker's, but still not my favorite. Uh, have you tried anything for Baker's? Yes, everything for Baker's, that's, that's my favorite Jim Beam stuff. Baker 7, probably, it's probably my go-to Jim Beam bottle right now, Baker 7. I did just recently get a Baker's 13, good stuff as well. Glenn wants an invite when I buy the Double Eagle. If I ever get, like, if I ever get an opportunity to buy a Double Eagle at MSRP, I'm going to take it. Like, I'm going to take, or an OFC, right? Something like that. I do have... I do have a friend that just got an OFC at MSRP. I was supposed to film it while I was out in Vegas and I just did not have time. So when I'm back in January, we are going to film a taste test of OFC. So it just, I, it won't be my, like I won't be able to just take the bottle home with me, but 1920 or JD single barrel barrel proof. That's tough, depends on the day. Depends on the day. Probably the 1920 for me. Like, I just like the old Forrester stuff. No, I will not be chasing the Eagle Rare 25 for an MSRP of 10 grand. I would not. Um, if I, if... So, say I hypothetically just stumbled into a store and one was sitting there for 10 grand. Or say I won the Alabama ABC lottery and they, and I was first in line and I walked in and they had one sitting there for 10 grand. I would struggle with the decision to buy it. I really would. Um, could I come up with 10 grand? Maybe, maybe if I really needed to. Would that derail a lot of other stuff I've got going on, like a mortgage payment? Probably, but, you know, but it, would I, what kind of content? It would really boil down to what kind of content could I create with that bottle? And I just don't have anything interesting enough to warrant what it would take to acquire the bottle. A $2,000 bottle, maybe. I might could do some fun stuff and make that money back. A $10,000 bottle, there are no videos I'm creating that are making $10,000. Like y'all are out of y'all's mind. I mean, there's not really many we're making that are making two grand. Definitely not two grand profit over what it costs to edit all these. Unlimited YouTube money, that's the thing, Ricky. We are making a little bit of YouTube money, but it is very much not unlimited. Old Forster 10 and 20, yeah, I need to do that. I haven't done it yet. So, so Mad Chapel, that would, yes. Yes, that would that would be the video, right? Like, can we pour a 25-year-old $10,000 bottle of whiskey into a lawnmower? But could I, could I bring myself to do it? I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. Was in Vegas, I saw a bottle of McAllen 72. I bet it doesn't taste that good, man. That's what I'm gonna bet. Uh, Rebel 10 year, I do have a bottle of Rebel 10. I think it's in the back somewhere. Um, I would like to grab it and try it for you, but I'm never gonna find it right now. 
Bottom all, nine years. We gotta, I gotta go to Heaven Hill Distillery. I gotta do that next time I'm up. What's YouTuber's opinion? Do you trust the most? I, the thing is, is most of these folks are super honest, man. Like, here's the thing. A lot of, a lot of the YouTubers get grief because they're usually only giving positive reviews. For the most part, they're giving positive reviews. But what you've got to realize too, from a, from another YouTuber's perspective, is that you get a lot of bottles. You buy some, people are, people send you some. If it's bad, we just skip it. Like we just don't do a review. We just won't talk about it. Like if it's if it's just not a good bottle, unless somebody asks me here, I'm not gonna mention it. And so, you know, normally they're giving positive reviews, they're skipping the bad ones, right? So you know if they're putting it out, they at least are compelled to put it out for some reason. Either it's pretty good and they wanna talk about it, they think it would be a good video. Um, the, I mean, I, I, the ones I consume the most, um, I watch the, you know, the bourbon junkies, um, most of their stuff, Matt Porter, ADHD whiskey. I think that dude's freaking hilarious. Um, so those are the ones I watch the most, but all of them are good. Like I respect everybody who's doing SLB does some really great stuff. Um, you know, I, you know, there was it mash and drum. Uh, the average drinker. I watch their their stream comes on right before mine. I'll watch it for an hour before I jump over here and stream with y'all. And they're a super small channel, but they're fun people. We got to get a Mr. Beast and Bruzel collaboration. Lord have mercy, Clark. We got to have to get more clout than we are a long way away from the level of clout it's going to take to make that work. So, as soon as I say that, Matt's here. I did not see Matt when I said that. So he's going to jump. He saw that question coming and he jumped right in. Um, drums and drams, like there's lots of, yeah, there's lots of great palettes out there for sure. So we're not like, we did not create this channel to be the best, bur I do not have the best bourbon palette on the planet. Don't want it, not trying to develop it. We're more indexing on this is supposed to be experience, it's supposed to be fun. We're having a good time. I'm having a good time. I'm sharing my good time with y'all. I'm not an idiot. I've drank a lot of whiskey. I know a little bit about it, but there are people out there with better palates, better reviews. It's one of the reasons, like you look at this channel, we don't do a lot of reviews anymore. We're gonna bring them back. We're gonna drop them to patrons. So we're gonna start doing more reviews coming up in the future, but like, that's not what this channel's about. This channel's more about the experience and the fun stuff and the storytelling, right? AD is in the house, like as soon as I bring him up. I, and I don't know if he was here before I said it. I didn't see him. Um, Appreciate it, Clark, thank you. Uh, no, we're gonna be honest. I'm not gonna lie to you, for sure. Not gonna lie to you. I, there's no reason for me to lie to you. I don't care if you buy anything. Ah, uh, keep bruising. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I haven't had the batch too, Michael. Appreciate it, Clark. So Matt, ADHD whiskey. Here, here's, I got a proposition for you. Let me know, Matt, are you still in the chat? Did you just come in and say hi and bounce? Let me know if you're still here. How did I come up with the Bruzel name? It's just a name. I had the domain name. I had the name. We were doing a, a beer website, like a recommendation engine 10, 12, 15 years ago. And it just didn't work out. Like smartphones came up, apps popped up. And so didn't, um, didn't take off. So I just held on to it. Like I just keep all the domains and names for everything I've ever done in my entire life. And I had this one. We were gonna do beer, bourbon, and barbecue for the channel. And so I just had the name. We used it. We, we went with bourbon, bourbon took off, and that's where we were. So, all right, so Matt's here. Matt, I need commitment right now. Here's what I'm trying to do, okay? I'm trying to do this. Q2, I'm trying to buy, I'm trying to buy a bunch of barrels of whiskey in, in Q1 for a Q2 blend. That's not going to include you. I got a, I got a plan for that. But I'm going to try to buy a bunch of barrels in Q2. Late Q2, I want to do a blend of bourbon. We're going to do it probably at Short Barrel in Atlanta. And I want you to come help me do the blend. So I need commitment. I need you just send me a message. Let me know what it's going to cost to fly you to Atlanta to help me do a blend of bourbons that we are gonna release under our own private label. So we're dropping our own label of bourbon next year. And now it's all gonna be sourced whiskey. Like if you don't like that, you can just suck a lemon. There's nothing I can do about that. I, I'm not gonna distill whiskey and set on it for 10 years at this point. I'm gonna buy some good whiskey and then we'll distill some stuff over the years where eventually it's our own whiskey. But 
We're gonna bring Matt in, but I need you to say, are you in or are you out? Like yes or no? That's what I need. All I need is a yes or no. And then you, you could DM me what it's gonna cost to have that happen. $1 million? The bottles are gonna be very expensive for you, Aaron. That's what it boils down to. What's my favorite bourbon for old fashions? Ancient, ancient age, we go for a lot. I do love a Woodford Double Oaked if you wanna like, you know, take it up a notch. Aaron, yeah, I mean, if you sent me a bottle and you said, you wrote a note and said, try this on stream, I would try it on the stream. Um, send it to the P.O. box, but you gotta like write a note that says, try this on the stream, because we do randomly get a lot of bottles. I live in Atlanta, I'm gonna buy it all. I appreciate it there, Brim, thank you. Best smoke wagon? I mean, uncut, unfiltered probably is the best one I've got. Uh, that's, you know. Frick yeah, I don't, see Matt, Matt, here's the thing. Matt is, I love Matt to death and he's here, I know he's listening. I, I, um, I'm very much like, just do it. Like, I, I don't have to be an expert. I don't have, like, I don't really care what anybody else thinks about my qualifications for what I'm trying to do. I just do stuff, it's fun, let's do it, right? Let's document it, let's, I'm learning. It's all a learning experience. Let's just do some fun stuff. Uh, Matt, Matt's just kind of, you know, Matt wants to, he's, he's a little more conservative, I guess is the best way of putting it, right? So Matt doesn't understand why people love his palate so much, why people love him so much. And, but Matt's a really awesome, awesome guy. Fun to hang out with in person, you know, incredibly hilarious, makes great videos. If you're not subscribed to ADHD Whiskey, you probably should be. We're just doing a whole ADHD Whiskey infomercial right here, but it doesn't matter. Like the whiskey's going to turn out good. We're not gonna put anything bad out. So come help me do the blends. It'll be a lot of fun. I thought it'd be fun. Be an interesting collab for sure. How often do I stream? We stream every Monday. I mean, we missed some, like we were out last Monday cause I had a work thing, right? Like this is still a part-time thing I'm doing here. Um, but we try to do every Monday. I'm hoping by the, as um, soon as the new studio's done, we're probably going to go to two days a week. We're probably gonna stream Monday, Wednesday, probably. Rank your picks. These picks right here, if I had to rank like which ones would I buy? Um, the, the, like this, all of these are really good picks. All of these are good. This one's toasted. This is gonna be the hardest one for you to replicate. This rye right here is a really, really solid rye. And that is a fantastic six-year-old Knob Creek. So they're all good. But if I were just like, say I could only buy one, I'd buy that one. If I could only buy two, I'd buy those two. And if I could get all three, I would freaking get all three. That's what I would do. See, so we shut Matt down. He just left. He just bailed. Matt just quit. I didn't see a reply. He just said, I'm done. Finished. I'm over. It's over. I'm done. Yeah, yeah we got a new studio we're building in there. Um, I've, got, I've got the room built out. We've got it kind of soundproofed. We're having shelves built. And that studio, this studio holds like 200 bottles or so, maybe 300 bottles. That one will hold well over a thousand bottles of whiskey. And we're gonna move in there as soon as they get done with it. Like I don't, I've paid the deposit for all the woodwork and building all the cabinets and stuff in there. And I don't know when they'll be done with it. I don't have a timeline on it. But when we move in there, some really fun crap's gonna happen. Like we are going to do some weird stuff. We have got some really crazy ideas for that Wednesday. It will not be this. It will not be me just sitting here reading comments and talking to the camera. We are going to do like a variety show, much more highly produced. We're gonna do a game show. We're gonna give away fun whiskey. We're gonna give away all sorts of things. Like we're gonna do some really, really crazy stuff on Wednesdays when we move into the new studio. So I got no reply from Matt. So I, I'm, I'm gonna take that as a no, Matt. I'm taking it as a no. Taking it as an, I'm making sure I didn't miss it. We'll take that as a no. That's fine. No, it's cool. Cool. It's cool. It's, that's fine. I'll take it. It's all good. Y'all hit the like button for me. Cheer me up a little bit. Seeing how Matt just said no. Seeing how Matt just said no. Y'all hit the like button. At least make me feel like I got lost in his garage. The lab coats. We need to break the lab coat out, don't we? House on fire. You can only pick five bottles. Which one you picking? Dude, if the house is on fire, I'm just gonna let all this shit burn. Insurance will take care of it, it'll be fine. 
Uh, but I get the question. So William LaRue, like the BTAC stuff. So, But really, William LaRue, um, probably some of our early store picks just because those are sentimental at this point. Uh, that Victor's single barrel barrel strength. I've got an unopened birthday bourbon for when my grandkids were born. And I mean, that's probably it. Then I'm bailing. Pull out the Weller 107. How's the Knob Creek Black Label? Yeah, we just tried that. It's so good. It's very comparable. It's very similar to this barrel pick, for sure. You'll go with me, Matt can stay home. It's all good. We were just, I don't have Matt. I do not have Matt Clout. We do not have the clout to pull Matt. He's like, man, I don't, I'm not collaborating with a channel like this. No credibility whatsoever. Billy Lululu Lemon. Grizzly pig. Um, I mean, we'll pull out the order seven. I don't care. Just killed my forgotten fork. You, you drank your bottle before I even got mine. Like I don't even have any of the. I don't have any of the Crittenden's picks yet. I'm gonna go tomorrow. I'm emailing the guys and I'm saying, let's call it. Everybody's got their bottles. Send me what's left. So I'm hoping. I've got a, like, I'm out of town Wednesday. I'm hoping by next week I have those. I can actually give them a try. Take it easy, JL. Take it easy, Eric. So we've got, we're gonna go for about 15 more minutes and then I'm gonna jump over to Discord. Um, we're gonna be the supporter only chat. So if you signed up for patron tonight, um, make sure you've linked your patron to Discord. If you can't figure it out, hit us up, do something, like send us a DM. I probably won't fix it tonight because I gotta go over there and jump on that, uh, that voice chat, but it'll be all good. Just made the mistake of tasting Ardbeg. Yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was a mistake, Richard. Haven't cracked any of the Bruzel picks. Just let, JB's collecting, man. That's not what they're for. Uh, Mr. Soapy, what's your take on Chattanooga whiskey? Uh, I, I don't like talking bad about anybody that's making quality whiskey, right? If, you're, if the whiskey's not quality, I'm okay sharing that with the world. Uh, Chattanooga is quality whiskey, but it is highball whiskey that is pot stilled. And that is not my thing. It's just not my thing. So I haven't had a ton of Chattanooga. I love, like I like some of it. I don't love most of it. I haven't bought the Fox and Odin yet. Appreciate it there, Schmidt. Peerless, uh, the Peerless I've got is good. We tried to do a barrel pick with them. It didn't work out. I may hit them up. Uh, too much over, I get it. I'm just giving you a hard time, JB. Uh, your Crittenden, it has a leak. Like, is it leaking because you're drinking it? That's not my, that, hey, if you pop the cork, the leak's your problem now. Appreciate it, Bill. Everyone has their taste for sure. I just found my lost unopened bottle of Bland Circle 2016. Where did you find it? Did you see the Bardstown and Goose Island collaboration bourbon? I did not, but I want to. Somebody send me a link. Somebody send me a link, any, oh, so tomorrow we drop the barrel pick of this. So tomorrow morning, so we've got bonus, we got bonus content this month. We might actually have two extra videos this month. We've got the short barrel barrel pick and then any other barrel picks that drop, we've got the video of those, except for the, the Clyde Maze, that video is already out. Um, so this one's dropping tomorrow. And then I think um, Friday, I think it's the South Dakota Sioux Falls. Have you had Jack Daniels Maplewood? I have not, nor do I want to. Actually, you know what? I think I had a bottle of that for about two minutes. I think I went to a drop. Somebody gave me, I get, somebody wanted a bottle I had. They traded me that one. And then somebody else wanted it and I just sent it with them. So I think I had one pour, didn't care much for it. Uh, would it be better to try a lot of bourbons for a bunch of distilleries? Yes, absolutely. That's the answer. Try a bunch of stuff, figure out what your palate is. You need to do a barrel pick with Whiskey Thief in Frankfort, Kentucky in 2024. Send, hey, send me a DM on that. If you're in the patron, like send me a message, let me know. I mean, I know who the, uh, several people have made that recommendation. I just want to remember that. Because we're, we're trying to do three a month next year outside of when we drop our own private blends. Um, and so that's, gonna, that's a lot of barrels. And so we're trying to plan, we're trying to reach out we're trying to schedule them 
so that we know when those barrels are roughly coming so we can kind of plan on all that. Tasmania in the house, man. Appreciate you joining, thank you. Mika, appreciate you. Love the channel and the content, learning a lot, thank you. Just had a message, I don't know, for 10 proof. Like, yeah, if you set a message on Patreon, somebody will get with you, whether it's me or one of the team members. Might not be tonight, but we'll get with you tomorrow. S. Myers with the super chat. Have you had a Russell Sagal Rick House? I have not. I have a friend that's like, I might be able to get you a bottle, and so I'm still waiting, but they're just so, they're like MSRP is like stupid. I don't even remember, I don't remember what it is, but it's it's price. Was it like over $200 just MSRP on those? I don't know. Haven't tried the new little book. I've got it. It was autographed by Fred and Freddie No. Just haven't opened it yet. Uh, did you see that Costco has a barrel of JD Select? I didn't. We don't have a Costco around here. I mean, there's one in Montgomery, but that's 45 minute drive, man. Who's doing that? Uh, Scott, yes, I've had a lot of K Luke, and all the K Lukes I've had have been fantastic. So don't sleep on those K Lukes. $300. $300. Do I want it? Like, do I want a Russell's for $300? I don't think I want it. I, I do want it, but I don't want to pay that for it. Don't want to. That's just, that's a ludicrous price. E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof's out of this world, man. That's good stuff, State Farm. I uh, haven't had the Voyage yet. I might have one coming, but I don't have one yet. No cost, there might be one in Columbus, but Columbus is 45 minutes for me, right? So there's one in Montgomery for sure. I uh, haven't had Michter's Celebration. I had the 20 year recently for the first time. I uh, did have some St. Augustine stuff, but that was years ago. I need to go back to it. I'm sure it's better. Like that was literally five or six years ago. I had some St. Augustine stuff. Uh, are the short barrel picks getting released soon? Yes, these are getting released tomorrow. So the video is dropped tomorrow morning. These bottles will be dropped at five o'clock central time to the highest tier patrons. And every 20 minutes, they'll move to a new patron tier until they are released to the public. Favorite Pappy, um, Lodby. I don't know, the 15s. The more I get into whiskey, the more I'm starting to like the oak, a little bit of oak, and the 15's so good. Anything older than 15's not, not the best though. Yeah, 13 for $400 is tough. What's the most I should pay for a Blanton's? I mean, that's up to you, man. Nobody's gonna judge you here. I will buy Blanton's at under $100 because I always know somebody will want it for that price. Like I just have friends that's like, hey man, why didn't you buy that blends? I really want a blends. And so I just know if I buy it for 95 or $100, somebody will take it off my hands for that price. The rip's good stuff. I just, the 12 is good, but it's just low proof. It's like 90 proof, right? Um, I don't remember my favorite liquor store in Atlanta. Uh, there was one, they gave me a really bad recommendation. Was it like Elemental Spirits or something like that? The recommendation they gave was no good, but they had a great selection. So overall a good store. Just don't know if I'd take their suggestions. Oh, it's not, St. Augustine's not good unless you buy the Saint for $200. That sucks. All right, guys, we are going to call it right here. I am going to spend a few minutes running to the restroom. In 10 minutes or less, I will be over in Discord in the voice chat for um, all of our supporters to hang out. So if you are on Patreon, link it to Discord. If you signed up tonight, if you have problems figuring that out, hit me up. I'm not gonna fix it tonight. I'm gonna be hanging out over there with supporters, but we will get you hooked up for future streams. We should be live again next Monday. Um, as far as I know, Jill will be with me on that stream. So it should be a little more to our normal. Don't forget tomorrow, these guys are dropping at five o'clock central time. The video drops. Watch that video all the way through. Hit the like button. Even if you don't like the fact that it got a little out of hand. It did get out of hand. It, we went way too hard with the short barrel stuff. So <laughs> ADHD said I just typed and deleted 10 responses. It's all good, man. I figured I'd put you on the spot just because it's fun. No pressure. It's all good. We'll figure it out, man. Uh, appreciate you hanging out with me and, and swinging by for a little while. but. Um, I, it's, it's cool, man. Either way, whatever you want to do, really fun. We'll have a good time. That's all I want to do. I want to have a good time and we'll make good whiskey by doing that. So 
He did respond. Um, just got a hit on a McKenna tenure for 135. What? What do you mean by hit? 135 for a McKenna 10 is a hell no. You know, that used to be a $35 bottle, man. Uh, appreciate y'all hanging out. We will see the supporters and the the patrons over on the um, over on the audio chat. Catch up with y'all later. And Matt, just hit me up. Whatever, Chad, you got my number, man. Uh, we'll catch up with y'all later.